welcome to back to everybody who's been watching my YouTube series, Wednesdays with Writers. My name is Amy Prokopis. I am a young adult author. I wrote the book, The Arena, and my newest urban fantasy, Guardians of the Sixth Gate, comes out in October. So welcome back. Today with me is a fellow young adult author and YouTuber, Sarah Sutton. Thanks for joining us. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Sutton. I am an indie romance writer, a um, young adult romance writer of six, soon to be seven books. My seventh book is called Teaching the Teacher's Pet, and it comes out August 17th. So that's really exciting. And it's the first book in a new series. So I'm super pumped about that. But yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> <laughs> you You have so many books under your belt. I wish I could write as often as you do. Um, my little boy takes quite a bit of my time away, but right. I want to know a little bit more about your journey to this point. So I've been following your YouTube for a while, and I know you've talked about it off and on about how you started out querying in the traditional world and then ended up in the indie world and you've loved it ever since. But I'd like to know a little bit more about how you got your start in and how that all began for you. Yeah. Um, I actually started writing back in elementary school because I just got obsessed with reading. Um, my school really pushed reading and I was just, I fell in love with it and I wanted to create my own stories. So I've been writing consistently, like ever since the third grade. Um, so I, going through like middle school and high school, I was writing like not serious, serious stuff, just like for fun, just practicing and everything. And then in my senior year, I got an idea for like a girl who has to have a fake relationship with a baseball player. And in my head, as I wrote and as I learned more about the industry, I thought traditional publishing was the way for me to go. Was like, I thought it was the only way to go kind of because you don't really hear much success about indies, especially back in like 2016, 2017 was when I was a senior. Mm -hmm. So, I definitely was pursuing the traditional route by like querying a few agents and I queried this one trad pub com com trad publishing company <laughs> and um, I they ended up accepting the manuscript in like I don't know 2018 I think mm -hmm. and then they ended up we ended up going back and forth with edits um, with an editor and that editor ended up leaving the company. And so my manuscript was kind of dropped off and rejected because the editor working on it had left. So I, I was accepted, but then we, they ultimately passed on it. And at that time, I was just feeling so discouraged because at that point I had told like everybody I knew I was going to be publishing a book <laughs> and I didn't want to have to like wait and go through the entire querying process again. And I'm like, you know what? Fine. I will just self-publish, which isn't the best mindset probably to go into, <laughs> work, but it worked. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how, and then I actually, at that time when I was writing out of my league initially, mm -hmm. um, that editor had suggested to write another book to follow up so that they could sell another book. And that's why I started working on What Are Friends For, mm -hmm. which ultimately ended up being my first book ever self-published. So yeah, it, it was a crazy ride, <laughs> um, but once I published Water Friends 4, I'm like, okay, I actually really enjoy, do, it's stressful to do it all myself, but yeah. I really like doing it all myself. So <laughs> yeah, that it was I've a crazy journey, but <laughs> that's, man, it's, I have kind of a similar start. I was in the query trenches with the arena. Um, well, I guess it wasn't with the arena. It was. I think it was with this book with guardians of the Sixth gate. I was querying it and I was getting a lot of positive responses, which is something I hadn't had in the past. When I've queried projects, I was getting a lot of emails about this is really interesting. Send me the rest of the manuscript or, um, and then some that were like really interested, but ultimately I was getting the same response of, I just don't have the time for this project or, all of my slots for the year are already full. And um, the more research I did, kind of like you, I realized how much time it takes to traditionally publish a book. And so I was writing the arena at the same time. And I thought, why not 
attempt it myself. Why not use this book, which was a different one for me. It's not usually in my wheelhouse. I'm more of a young adult fantasy um, romance writer yeah. than like the science fiction romance. But I decided this is different. Let's see where it goes and let's try the, the self-publishing thing out. And I also really enjoyed doing it all myself. I didn't think I would, and it's definitely a ton of work because yeah. there's more than just the writing part. Um, but I, I actually enjoy some of that marketing and the business stuff. I didn't think I would, but it was a fun journey for me too. So we have a little bit of similarities in that. Yeah. Um, and I, let's see, I'm in the middle of out of my league right now. I have not gotten, I, <laughs> I haven't gotten all the way to the end of it just because I've run into like some things in my own life that have pulled me away and demanded some time, but I'm in the middle of it. And what are friends for? I finished that one a couple weeks ago and I loved it. I devoured it so fast. So <laughs> I am really enjoying your work. I've been like pushing it out to everybody. I know that, oh, these are super quick reads and they're really fun and, and oh. I love it. So, um, thank you for putting that work out there. Which, thank you for would reading. You, yeah. <laughs> what would you say is your favorite book that you've ever written? Do you have a favorite? That's such a hard thing to pick. I, it, it is, but it's also, I tr always try myself, I try to make myself answer this question because it does change for me. Like, I don't know why it does, but like, depending on like where I'm at in my headspace, I'm looking at my books on the, sh on the shelf right now. <laughs> I, I think for right now, and actually for a little bit of time, Two Kinds of Us was like really, really fun to write. Um, it was that kind of like hidden personality. She's pretending to be kind of two people at once sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. And it was so fun to like explore that side of a character who wants to be somebody else. So I think that one is probably the favorite one that I've written so far. They're all great, but I think that one's my favorite right yeah. now. <laughs> wow. Well, I haven't, I need to, I need to get that one sent to my house. It's the next one on my list. I'm yeah. trying to work through all of them. So I've been buying them as I get, as I like finish the next one. And I am dying to get into that because I already have read into that one a little bit and reading head, but I can't <laughs> wait to get it. And I can, I am super excited about your new series. So because that's your next, your next book, it's the 17th, right? Was it, it August seventeenth? I mean, oh I'm, I'm like ninety percent sure. It's the 17th. <laughs> I know it's only a couple weeks away because I've been seeing all of you, all of your like information getting pushed out on social media. Um, so let's talk about. I think we we should, since it's so close, we should talk more about what that book is about and how it leads into like the rest of your series a little bit. Yeah. Um, so the series as a whole is called the most likely to series and it revolves around this list that goes out in high school called the most likely to list so people are voted like most likely to never have their first kiss most likely to um never get a girlfriend and the main character in book one called teaching teachers pet is voted most likely to marry her math book <laughs> and so she has been picked on because she lives in this goes to school where like athletics is praised. Um, there's a group of popular people and she is a math geek. She loves math and all that stuff. And then the, um, one of the star football players needs some tutoring help. And even though she doesn't want to, um, to get in line with what her principal wants, she agrees. And it's been, it's really fun. It's really fun to see like the kind of fun and games, the antics, the banter, because both of them are very snarky. It is an enemies to lovers kind of vibe to the book. Um, and I haven't written that before. So yeah. And they're all, the whole series are standalone books. So you can read them out of order. doesn't matter. Um, but they all have something to do with that most likely to list. So it's yeah. And this book, ugh, I love the two main characters <laughs> so much. Oh my gosh. I just like the entire, cause that's sort of how love and Fenton County is also it's um, they're all standalone. You could read them in whatever order, but they do overlap a little bit. Some of those little details and that like those Easter eggs, as I find them have been so satisfying. Yes. I think 
maybe it's, I think it's more of a trope in indie publishing to do those kinds of series, but I've never encountered one until I've read your books. And I love that. It's made me think so much about, um, the series that I have coming out guardians of the six gate and how I could possibly like interweave things into that story. So it also, it takes place in the same, um, like the same storyline. It's just really fascinating. And it's an interesting kind of writing style. Do you have to do anything in like the, the outlining phase to make sure that you keep track of those overlapping details? <laughs> Yeah, it, this one, this series is actually like hardcore. I have to keep track of everything. Oh my god! Because for the most part, all seven books happen over the course of the same four weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's been like to make sure I have football games at set high schools, like make sure that never changes, oh, make sure yeah. character, a side character from book one is in the right spot for book four. That's been tough. Oh my because gosh. Love in Fenton County isn't that interconnected. They're just like yeah. some fun Easter eggs and stuff like that because I didn't plan that very well. Um, but this one is so much more interconnected. They're all still standalones, but like to just make sure for continuity sake, it's mm -hmm. been tough. And I've been outlining a ton, which is new because I'm not a huge outliner, but um, I have like calendars for each book. So like where the character needs to be <laughs> get a certain day. I'm like, okay. We got this. <laughs> I can't, man, I can only imagine because I'm also, I'm a little bit more of a pantser. I've kind of developed my own kind of outline style using like Google Slides that's working for me, but I still leave space in my outline just to like riff and just see where characters go. I never fully plan anything I've ever written. And I don't know that I ever will. Um, it definitely helps like in the indie side of things, when you have to go back through yourself and right. do all of that editing. And it makes it so much easier if you can nail things down a little bit more um, the first time around, because uh, right. it does save you that mess in, on the back end, <laughs> as I'm, I'm finding out with the second book a little bit. But wow. man, so <laughs> I've been, I've, um, the last couple episodes, oh, it just went out of my brain. Oh no. I hate oh, what that I remember is. now. I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been asking the last couple guests that I've had in this series, um, like what has been the turning point or like the, the big breakthrough for them in their journey towards publication. So to this, up to this point, what is something that you think has made like the biggest difference for you? Um, Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I've been doing this for almost, uh, almost three years. It's going to be three years in January, I think. Um, so we've, there's been a lot of trial and error with a lot of different marketing tactics and stuff, mm -hmm. but, uh, I think like a lot of people, TikTok has been absolutely like game changing. And for me personally, um, so has KU Kindle Unlimited switching mm -hmm. into that has been like a huge difference. I've, I've seen a huge difference in terms of like read through and um, sales and things like that. Um, but definitely social media and the, the marketing side for video kind of content, because I'd always leaned heavily into like the Instagram feed posts, graphics and stuff like that, mostly because it's the easiest for me to do. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, marketing with videos has been like so game changing and so like I've seen a huge jump since I've started doing it. So um, I think that's my biggest, if that was the answer to your question. No, yeah, I, I definitely, especially TikTok, I've seen a lot of different authors have lots of levels of, su of success using TikTok. And I also have found that I've been able to push out more of my content to more people using TikTok, especially so I'm also noticing that and Kindle Unlimited, that is also something that I'm planning on using with this book. I'm not currently enrolled in that, but I'm, I'm going to do kind of a trial and error of my own yeah. and see where that gets me. Because I know that, um, there are, there is like a, a certain niche of people out there that devour books just on rotation like that through Kindle Unlimited. And, um, especially like anything romance related. The romance readers seem to be especially 
big in the indie and Kindle Kindle world. Yes, like, definitely Ooh. hunger for that. Yes. <laughs> And I think it's good that you're doing like a trial for it too. I feel like everybody needs to kind of see for themselves how it's going to work. Um, and if it aligns with your business plan, um, rather than like hardcore say yes or hardcore say no, mm-hmm. that was my whole thing. Like in the beginning, I thought I never wanted to go into Kindle Limited because I was just listening to what other people have talked about, but I weighed the pros and cons and I'm like, you know, I've got nothing to lose to mm-hmm. try it out. Um, so And then I tried it out and it's been, it's been crazy how well it's done for me, but it is a case by case kind of genre by genre basis, but it's so cool to test out new things like that. Yeah. I think that's, what's really fun and the most, probably the most enjoyable part of the indie world for me with self-publishing is it, it is so different based on the author, the readership they have. The, like you said, the genre that you're in. So in, in Kindle Unlimited, they make it pretty easy to enroll, but there's still a period where um, you can decide to opt back out. And so it's not as, it makes me feel a little better because mm-hmm. the advice, at least in the, the self-publishing world is always to go wide, to try and get your book on as many platforms as you can. And in Kindle Unlimited, you're limited to your ebook only on that platform. And so that idea was why I initially with the arena was like, nope, we're, we're going to get this baby out as far as I can. So we'll see how that goes for me. I'm excited to try that out and see if like, I can find more of my, um, my readership by using that on an ebook platform. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Over now. (laughs) Yeah. It'd be fun to see. Yeah. So what is like your biggest piece of advice for somebody that's just starting in the self-publishing world? Because I'm fairly new. Um, This will be my second year in it, but I've only, I've only had the one book out because my time is a little bit more limited. So I haven't been able to do as much as I'd like, but what are like some of your self-publishing musts? Um, For me, I feel like one thing that I always tell people is to try and be like to not get discouraged if you don't see results right away because a lot of people do go into self-publishing thinking you will get a lot of money right off the bat and it is a slower growth like Mm -hmm. definitely um but when you stay consistent and when you like keep pushing and keep working towards like your goals you're gonna see returns eventually um so that's something I always say and I always recommend to like make sure you know like solidly why you're doing this if it is for money then to like just keep (laughs) solid in that and make that your motivator to keep working hard um but if it's because you love it that's going to help in the long run if you have that solid because you will I mean it's always a it's it's going to happen you're going to get feedback that's both negative and positive um so when you're solid and why you're doing it for you the negative feedback doesn't really affect you as much Um, in the long run, because Mm -hmm. in back in the beginning, I just self-published because I was, I wanted the book out there and I wasn't like fully confident in like, I'm doing this because I want to do it because you know what I mean? So when I got that negative feedback, it hurt a lot more, um, because I wasn't kind of like focusing in on why I'm doing this because I was doing it because I love it. And so I wish I had been more solid in my headspace when I started off, but <laughs> I, if I, if I can give any tips, I would definitely recommend to be like, to be confident in your work. And when you publish it that way, when you do get negative feedback, because it will happen, um, it doesn't rock yeah. you as much because you're confident in your product and mm-hmm. you're confident with your own opinion and your own words and things like that. So, yeah. And then from like other, like marketing standpoints I people always recommend a newsletter that's a really good thing and to get started on social media before you publish because you don't want to start your account on the day you start your pre-order because you're just going to be shouting in the dark no one's going to know who you are um so to establish like followers a few friends to help share your work and stuff is probably a definite must as well from the whole marketing standpoint Mm -hmm. for me yeah I definitely um I had with the arena, I had all kinds of things set up 
since you mentioned pre-orders to do pre or like a pre-order period and try and get ARC reviewers out. I had like a whole period that I was going to do that. And then my cover designer backed out and I didn't have the access to my files. And so I had to scramble to find a new cover designer. I had to like remove all of the old covers from all, like those graphics I made. And it took my time away from trying to put out any kind of like early readers or get early copies to re reviewers. I was a little more concerned just having a cover. Yeah. <laughs> this oh time gosh. around with Guardians of the Sixth Gate, I am putting together like an actual like, hey, do you want to be an, an early reader? You want an early copy of my book before it comes out? I am putting together a list for that because I, I noticed that when I initially published my book, kind of like you said about it being a slow growth, not everyone's going to flock to Amazon and buy your book on day one. Right. Um, if I had had at least some more time for pre-orders and maybe had early reviews out, I think it would have helped like take off my sales more because I ended up having to do a lot of like hard work in the first month, just just to like play catch up, just to tell people, hey, the book is out now. Here's what it looks like because I missed out on like a whole month of that before it was ever out. So that's always a piece when a few people who've asked me what was like most important in the process, that early marketing side is usually what I say to you. Yeah. I'm right there absolutely. with you. And like you said with ARCs, it's, it's so beneficial to get ARCs, even if it's just for that kind of vanity, like having stars on the product page yeah because, like, when a book is fresh out it doesn't and if it doesn't have reviews in like the first week readers might not like trust it enough to click and buy so that's why I think arcs are, are so important like and it's hard because people don't always like um review when they promise to but like you can't yeah. control that um no. so it's hard to find like a set amount but arcs I think are definitely really important Yes, I'm definitely putting, that's something that um, I had a list going when I, when I published the arena, I had a list going of like, here are all the things that I want to do different the second time around that I can't change anymore. And that list grew longer and longer. And so I'm working through that as I go the second time around. And I am finding that the process is easier because you've done it once. The first time you do anything is just a learning process, even if you think you have it all figured out. And man, I did so much research before I ever started and I still made mistakes and learned so many things along the way. Um, so that it's been super helpful talking like to you, people who've already done it to share, um, what was most important in their success. And those early reviewers, it tends to be what I hear the most when I ask. So I'm putting, trying to put a lot of work into sharing early drafts for people to, to see what they, if they like, and just to get opinions on it and yeah. then to get an opinion. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure. So you, um, all of your books that you've published anyway, they're all contemporary romance. Have you ever dabbled in any other kind of genre? I have, I actually started my whole writing journey like in middle school especially I wrote definitely all paranormal romance it was like oh, angels <laughs> um I so many like I, I look back on it now and I'm like oh my gosh I cannot believe I wrote that like <laughs> in and it was like so heavy in my whole like that was all I wrote and then when I got to high school I kind of realized that in those kind of paranormal romance um, sort of stories mm -hmm. I was weighing so heavily on the romance <laughs> side of things that I'm like is there really any plot here other than the he's an angel I'm like no <laughs> there's really not <laughs> so I I switched over to contemporary in high school by writing one direction fan fiction so oh my gosh <laughs> you know, we all gotta start somewhere <laughs> oh we've all yeah we've all dabbled in that right oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fan fiction oh, oh my swear. gosh but yeah, yeah that was that was where I started with the whole contemporary world and I haven't gone back since so actually that's a lie I did write a <laughs> fantasy kind of paranormal one back in 2018 I believe for nano but I didn't ever do anything with it Ooh. yeah I don't know why I, I dabbled back into it but 
Huh. I realized again, I weigh too heavily on the romance. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I definitely find, I never considered myself like a romance writer. I never even have considered myself a romantic person, but I've (laughs) noticed, especially now that I'm much older and I've gone through the process of publishing a book. So writing a book now looks a little different than it did when I was just, you know, writing for fun or whatever. But I've noticed too, that even in like my fantasy, because I write mostly fantasy, even in um, my fantasy storylines, I cannot help myself. There's always a romance in there somewhere. I just cannot, I can't leave it out. So I also have kind of that tendency to maybe not as heavy, um, into the romance side of things. It definitely could be like, if it wasn't included in the book, most of the times, most of the time the plot would still stand, but it wouldn't be as, you wouldn't be as emotionally invested, I think, but I also love a really good romance. Yeah, yes. probably why I'm devouring your books right now. <laughs> they're so they're just so fun. I was going through kind of like a rough patch. Um, I think it was right before Camp NaNoWriMo hit because I did do that for this month. Um, and I was having kind of like a tough time mentally and I needed to switch from like what I was reading to something a little bit more light, really fun. And so I thought I'll pick up, I've all, they've been on my shelf forever. So I'll pick up a Sarah Sutton book and I picked up what are friends for, and it was perfect. It was, it was, it's like sitting down, um, under a blanket with a nice cup of coffee for an afternoon. It really is just like, just it's the environment. It was all warm and fuzzy. Oh, I'm so happy <laughs> that you liked it so much. Oh, oh yeah. Big fan here. <laughs> So, um, do you have any other like future series planned out? How many projects tend to float around in your brain at one time? Because I know I usually have at least two or three that are not what I'm writing at the moment. (laughs) Yeah. Which is madness. (laughs) I think right now I don't have any future series planned so much, mostly because I do have seven books well technically six left to still do in this series but all of those ideas are still in my head so I have like technically six like projects in my head right now which has been time and a half trying to make sure everything was like straight and everything but I do have one Christmas book um in my head as well I was gonna try and publish it this year but it's just not gonna happen um I'm hoping for next Christmas to be able to get that one out so um so I guess that's technically seven stories right now in my head that (laughs) is taking up space (laughs) I guess I didn't think about that because you are interweaving the storyline with the most likely two series so I guess you would have to have them in your brain or else you're not going to be keeping track of all the the plot points and such. Right. And I actually, last July, I outlined all of the books um, in this series. So like I have a a fairly good idea of where I want to go with them. So I don't have to think about them because they have already been outlined, but at least like, especially for book three and four, I've been thinking about those two a lot because they are kind of more connected. Mm -hmm. Um, And since I just started working on book three, but uh, yeah, it's a lot. I don't know what I was thinking. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think it's super cool. I cannot wait for your book to come out and to see how they all, especially once they get a couple more out and see how they all tie together. I'm super excited for that. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Oh man, I had a good question in my brain and I completely forgot again. Oh man. (laughs) I'm so excited to like, have all the reader like as a reader myself I absolutely love um seeing other characters pop up in different books like that's why Can't Catch a Wrath and Two Kinds of Us were really fun because the different characters do pop up and even though they're not like in the most likely two series they're nothing like crazy important just those like you said those little easter eggs when you find them it's just like oh or like oh so that's what he was doing in book one when he wasn't on the page or something like yeah. that I mean, it's just like oh that's so fun to me I have loved that and like like I said I'm only halfway about halfway into um out of my league so I haven't I feel like the more books I read 
And the more of those Easter eggs that end up popping up between all of the books, the more like, I, I just, I'm so satisfied with the few I found that I can only imagine finding more of them as I go. Yeah. So I just, there's just something about it that it's just so different than a lot of books that I've read. I I'm also a big reader. Um, and I read, uh, I write mostly fantasy, but I read like just about anything across the board. I try to read all kinds of things to get a different perspective, um, from just from different areas of like writing and storytelling. And there's just something so different about, uh, your stories being connected, but not connected yeah. to the point that you can't, like, if I wanted to read them like backwards from like the last one you published all the way to your first one, I could do that. And I would still catch Easter eggs as I went, maybe not like the first introduction of a character, but right. then like, I'd get to the next one and go, Oh, that's that one guy that was that saw her or talked to her that one time. And there's just something satisfying. Cause that's the way I think, because it mimics a lot of real life interactions, especially in the high school setting, which yeah. is where your books are, you know, you may not know everybody in your class, but you kind of know everyone in your class. And that's sort of the vibe you get from the way you've written it. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. It's so, it's so fun. It has been so fun. The whole, I, I heard somebody suggest to do it and I've seen a lot of authors in my genre do it. And so I'm so glad that I attempted it because I fell in love with the whole weaving Easter eggs in and stuff. It's super fun. Yeah. So has any of like your time in school influenced, I'm sure it has, but is there anything like specifically from your time in school that you have found super helpful in writing your series? I don't know. I feel like my high school, my high school was more like sports focused, but mm -hmm. not like as heavily as I'm portraying it in the most likely two series. And we didn't have clicks in my high school because we were super, super small. My graduating mm -hmm. class was like 54 kids. Um, okay. Yeah. And we were yeah. super small. <laughs> so we didn't have clicks. We didn't have like bullies or anything like that so it's been kind of it's been actually kind of tough to try and write a high school setting from a larger high school mm -hmm. um and kind of try and navigate not making it too cliche but making it realistic because even mm -hmm. though it might feel cliche like bullies exist you know people bullies yeah, that's a real like, thing yeah yeah and um so that that's actually been tough so I haven't really had a chance to pull too much um but some of the teachers are inspired by teachers from my high school. Um, like Miss Keller kind of reminds me of my middle school art teacher a little bit more. Oh so there's things like that, but not necessarily like the, the overall theme so much. We might have like little character cameos of teachers of my past, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fun though. Yeah. See, I went to. Um, I get, I mean, it's a big, I went to a big high school. My graduating class was, uh, a little under 400, I think <laughs> So it's quite a bit bigger. We're not the biggest school in our area, but we are at one, we are a big school yeah. and I'm having kind of a similar, um, I'm having to do some similar thinking to like what you're describing because in guardians of the six gate, it takes place in a teeny tiny town uh, in a teeny tiny school. Yes. <laughs> and, so, and so as you're talking, I'm like, that sounds really familiar. And I, I'm like, oh, it's because I'm doing the same thing, but I'm having to go from big town thinking and social atmosphere to the small town atmosphere and not make it, and like you said, not make it too cliche. Right. Um, and it is kind of a challenge because it's not something that I'm as familiar with, but I think that's the, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> Exactly. That's the fun part of exactly. writing is exploring. That's because that's a lot of what writing is, is exploring um, different ways of thinking or people that you don't yet know. And I love that about it. Yeah, for sure. Yes. So we are starting to run a little bit short on time, but just kind of to keep in that vein, what is your, uh, your favorite part about writing anything in the process like beginning to end what's your favorite thing about it I absolutely love 
to be able to watch the characters grow over the course of the drafts. My characters always start off very rough. <laughs> Their motivations aren't always obvious in the draft one, but by the end of the draft to see them kind of grow and like become more of a full fledged character just feels so satisfying to me. And then like my favorite aspects to write are always the first kisses, like always. Ooh, always. That's such a big moment. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> also so a really awkward one too. I like, um, especially in writing, like when books I read, I like when there's a little bit of that awkwardness to it the first time, because that first encounter is always a little weird. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you do that very well, especially with, I mean, you got to mention it, especially with what are friends for that was very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I love it so much. Me too. I'm, I love I it. I love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know where the idea came from. We just, we just came up and I'm like, okay, let's write it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely, it put like such a fun, like it was kind of funny to me as I was reading it, knowing like this background and sort of blushing myself thinking, oh my gosh, that has to be like a little mortifying for her. <laughs> I would die if that was me. Oh, would me, too, die. me too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, that's about all of our time. I'm so happy that we could make this work and that I had you on to share all of your thoughts of writing and about your books. I am loving them. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to move on to the next one and the next one. And also your new series coming out in August. Congrats on that. I will definitely be pushing that out when I see it and getting on that pre-order list. So. Oh. I'm so excited. Yeah. And for everybody watching, I will have Sarah's, um, all of her social media will be in the description box. It'll also be on the screen in the video as we watch this. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for having me. <laughs>